It's every boater's nightmare. Zebra and quagga mussels discovered on your boat. Once found, the clock starts ticking to stop them in their tracks. We're at the Edmonton Decontamination Building with inspectors who know exactly how to keep invasive species from hitching a ride across our waterways. Yeah, so when we do a decontamination, it means that there are mussels found or they're present on the watercraft. It can be the size of a fingernail or what we're actually typically seeing is they're the size of a grain of rice. So very difficult. Uh, this boat can take multiple hours given the size and the level of fouling. So um, to safeguard that, we do quarantine a watercraft. When a watercraft is quarantined, it receives an incident number, which is used for tracking the watercraft throughout the decontamination process and provides the program with data on high risk watercraft incidents. Watercraft can be quarantined for up to 30 days, which is the lifespan of an invasive mussel when out of the water. If there is an indication that this is insufficient, the quarantine can be extended to ensure the risk is mitigated. Doesn't mean that they can't leave or anything like that. They can still take the boat home. It just means that it cannot launch so that we're preventing that spread. We also will follow up with a secondary inspection or reinspection because these can be so small. As a boat owner, it's critical that you do not take your boat to a car wash and try the decontamination process on your own. We try and avoid that at all costs, muscle foul or not. Just there's standing water um, is a big thing for us, not just for villagers, which are the microscopic larvae of these mussels. It they can contain plant fragmentation, uh, microorganisms, anything else that might not be native to that different type of body of water. So washing your vehicle or your, your, your truck and trailer and your boat um, at a car wash isn't ideal. It can get into different systems. Same as washing your boat on your driveway. If it's close to a sewer system, that can spread. And like I said, these villagers are microscopic and they can live in really small amounts of water. Don't like to give timelines to people. There are a couple factors that come into that. So the complexity of the watercraft. So this is a fishing boat. You can see everything that's inside of it. It's got live wells equipment, but compare that to a wakeboard boat that has hundreds of gallons of ballast tanks and bags, or a sailboat that has a generator and an air conditioner and other systems that still need to be flushed because they took in raw water. So there's the complexity. There's the level of fouling as well. So depending on how fouled, if it's been sitting in the water and it's a tedious task and these bissel threads are what allows them to stick and they're actually the most difficult part to get off. But with a full decontamination, we have to hit every entire system, the way the water picks it up and the way that it spits out of a boat too. So it is a lengthy process. So it's really hard to say, but I'd say minimum two hours, but I don't want to give it like a total time frame. I think clean drain dry is the biggest one, pulling the plug so that the water can drain. One of the biggest things is making sure you stop at an inspection station. That's why we're here, right? We want to educate and make sure that everybody knows how to do that. If they are going to a muscle fouled water body, just to make note of that and make sure that you can get inspected so that we can continue to prevent the risk and the spread. It is a free process. So come on in and get your boat inspected and we'll do the decon. I think another misconception is people with the time of the timelines and that's why we're really strict on not giving timelines because it really depends on how you're bringing the boat in. A boat can come in any way, it has, we want it to leave clean, drain, dry. So if you don't take good care of your boat, that could be more time consuming. You don't know the systems on your boat, that's a little bit more time consuming because now we have to figure it out as well. Our inspectors are kind of subject matter experts in that. So it's, it's hard when people don't know their boats. And I think another misconception is people think that paddle boards, canoes and kayaks and inflatables don't need to stop. And, they're still a type of watercraft and they do, they do need to stop. Anything that really touches the water is required to stop. You know, it's not just about following the rules and stopping at inspection stations whenever you happen to be bringing a, a watercraft into the province. It's really about protecting our natural resources, getting aquatic invasive species into Alberta is the last thing any of us want to see. So always remember to clean, drain and dry your boat. Till next time, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors.